I thought I would just spend a minute or so recapping what we've heard. This week, I tried to communicate as a reminder to you all and myself as well, what it means when God says that he has a purpose for our lives and realizing that purpose. The first thing we saw is that we're here on this earth and our life is essentially an entrance exam for eternity. And the reality is, if we even get one answer wrong, we fail the entire exam. Then we saw that because of God's immense love, he sent his son Jesus who lived on this earth and got every answer correct. And by his perfect life and death and resurrection, he now offers to help us write the correct answers on our exam so that we too can get 100%. However, we must let go of our old incorrect answer paper and receive his perfect answer paper. Now, while we're here on earth, we must also recognize that we are completely helpless, as helpless as a glove without a hand in it. But if we let him fill us with his power by the Holy Spirit, we too can do his will here on earth. I hope you'll keep these pictures in your mind, dear friends. After Jesus died and rose again, he said that he was going up to heaven to get everything ready for us to join him there. But he didn't leave us alone here on this earth. He is still here on this earth in the form of the Holy Spirit. And if you will let him, he wants to be your best friend as you walk through life. I want to tell you my honest testimony, dear friends. Jesus is really my closest friend today. He speaks to me in my spirit, and, and I talk with him throughout the day. He has carried me faithfully through many ups and downs in my life. There were many times in my life when I thought I wasn't sure how I was going to get through a very difficult situation. But here I am because of God's grace. Jesus has walked with me faithfully, and he wants to do that for you as well. You have a full life ahead of you, and I hope that you will trust him. God has placed us on this earth where we learn and work and play, and he wants you to do your best in all of these things, according to the ability that he's given you, and never comparing yourself with others. But while you're doing all these things, keep eternity in mind. That's what I've tried to stress this week. Keep eternity in mind. Have you ever played the game Monopoly? I used to love that game when I was a kid, and now I still get to play it with my kids. It's a popular board game which mimics real life in that you earn money and you buy properties, you build houses and businesses, etc. But eventually the time will come for the game to end. And then the board is folded up and everybody's money and property titles and houses are all put away into the same box. When Jesus went up to heaven, he also said that he would return. And when he does, this is exactly what he's going to do with everything that we see on earth. The Bible says in 1 John 2, verse 17, that the world and everything in it that people consider great is passing away. God is going to fold up all the successes, money, pleasure, popularity, and everything else of earth, just like that Monopoly board. So you may ask, does it really matter then? Can I quit school <laughs> or quit work and go live as a hermit somewhere? No, certainly not. Even if you're thinking, well, it's exam time, maybe I get to quit. No, God wants you to do well. In fact, work and play are all part of God's plan for us. That verse in 1 John 2 verse 17 goes on to say, that the one who does the will of God will live forever. So what does it mean 
to do the will of God. He tells us in another place in Colossians 3, verse 23, that whatever you do, whether work or play, do it with all your heart. Do it for Jesus, knowing that he is the one who will give you an eternal reward. So while you go through this real-life monopoly journey here on earth, dear friends, it's not as important how much you have and whether you're winning the game. Here's what is important. And I've taken this from a verse in the Bible, Micah 6, verse 8. You can look it up sometime. Here's what's important. First, be kind. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 12, something to this effect. Think of how you would want to be treated and treat others this way. Before you do or say something toward another person, imagine that you were in their shoes and someone is about to do the same thing to you. It will change how you live. Secondly, be merciful. Jesus said in Luke 6, verse 36, again, words to this effect, never forget how merciful God has been to you. And when anyone does some harm to you, be quick to forgive them. Make it your goal to go through your life without holding a grudge against even one person. No matter how much harm they might have done to you, let go of all grudges. Be kind, be merciful, forgive. And thirdly, be humble. Never look down on anyone. Remember, everything that you have that you might be proud of or be tempted to be proud of, whether it's your abilities, your looks, your position, something that you think you might be better than others, in, all of this was given to you by God. Always think of the others as more important than yourself, and think of their needs before your own. You'll face many trials on the way, but God will never let you down as you trust in him. In closing, let me leave you with these words, which I borrowed from Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 28 onwards. I think you all have a Bible. If you don't, you can certainly ask a teacher for one, and they'll be glad to give you one. I'd like you to go back and look up these verses sometime today in Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 28. I'll explain it in words that have blessed me that I wrote down. If you love God, no matter what you face in life, he will make all of it eventually work together for your good. That's because he has a wonderful purpose for your life. And he's excited to accomplish it through you. This is your purpose. This is the finish line. If you keep trusting God, when you reach the end of your life, he will have finished making you fully like him in nature. You will be, as it were, Jesus's younger brother or younger sister. That's why he called you. And that's why he justified you. And that's why he's giving you this eternal glory. Do we need to say anything more to all of this? The writer in Romans says, well, let's just say this. If God would do so much for you in giving you his only son, he will certainly help you in everything you need today. And nothing that you face, nothing at all will be able to defeat you. Even if you face trials or distress, or if people persecute you, if you find that you don't have food or clothing even someday, or even if your life is in some danger, remember, God hasn't stopped loving you. Nothing can make God stop loving you, because he is love.